You were listening to Making It in the Toy Industry, episode number 71. Welcome to Making It in the Toy Industry, a podcast for inventors and entrepreneurs like you. And now your host, Ajel Wade. Hey there, toy people, Ajel Wade here, and welcome back to another episode of the Toy Coach Podcast, Making It in the Toy Industry. This is a weekly podcast brought to you by thetoycoach.com. Today, I am joined by Mitchell Wu, toy photographer and artist who is known in the toy industry for his stunning stories that he creates through toy photography. Mitchell is an expert in capturing the illusion of motion and emotion where none exists. And he has worked with dozens of toy and entertainment companies like Marvel, the Disney company, Hasbro, Mattel, so many. It's amazing. And I'm so excited to talk to him today. And we are going to dive in to the art of toy photography. But first, Mitchell, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Ajel. It's been a long time coming. I mean, we tried to do this a few times. And as I said earlier, third time's a charm. It's so cool to be here. Thank you so much. I'm really glad that you're here. <laughs> the first thing I want to say is almost a huge thank you because you were one of the, the biggest names to support me and my podcast early on when I, when I took like a chance and talked about something that was like a tough topic, you just shared it so openly and supportively. And even when the trolls came out, you were defending me. I really <laughs> appreciate you noticing me honestly and supporting me. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. I mean, it's, a, you had an amazing message and that was probably one of the most amazing and courageous posts that I'd seen in quite a while. So, and it totally resonated with me and I felt it you know, being Asian myself, and we are going through our own challenges right now. But you know, I just want to support people who have positive things to say and are trying to make a difference. And that post definitely did. It definitely oh, did. So I mean, thank you. Thank you. But let's talk about you. You are <laughs> toy industry famous for your photography. I remember once you liked my stuff, I started stalking you on the internet. And then I saw just the coolest images. And okay, to start off, tell us, what first came in your career? Was it toys or photography first? Actually, it was neither. I, I have a degree in illustration and I spent 20 years in consumer products and I was in, and not too far from the toy industry. I was in the gift and collectibles industry. So mm -hmm. whereas, you know, right now my clients are creating amazing toys, the companies that I worked for or my clients back then created really fun giftware and collectibles. And when I say collectibles, that they were either um, statues or sculptures made out of resin or ceramic, but it could have, could have been something as simple as mugs as well. So all, you know, the entire gift gift category, and especially collectibles is something that I focused on for quite a while. But yes, photography, after I left that industry, photography definitely came first. And that was with corporate photography, headshots, wedding photography, lifestyle. And then after that is when toy photography came in. I've always thought about photography and I apologize for saying this in advance. I've always thought about photography as probably one of the dying businesses, right? I'm like, who, like, because of all the stock photos and stuff, like, were you nervous about that when you broke into it? No, because let's see, I was probably naive. So it didn't, it wasn't something that scared me. I just really wanted to, to do something else. And in 2006, I was at the end of my consumer products career. I had the highest paying job of my life, but it was also the worst job of my life. And oh, no. at, around the same time, I lost my older brother. And those two things combined really, really made me take a close look at what I was doing with my life and why I was so unhappy and how I got so far off of my path, the path that I originally thought I would be on when I got out of art school, you know, bright eyed and out of art school, I have all these, I had all these amazing dreams of what I'd be doing. And I don't have any regret, regrets at all because Everything I have today, including my family, my wife, my kid, is because of that career choice that I made. But at two, in 2006, it really kind of all came to a head and I knew I had to, I had to figure something else out. So photography was something that I'd always been interested in. It was something that I had very little experience with. So there was a huge learning curve, but it was something that I was really intent on doing and something that I had to focus on. And, and it, was, it was a slow start. And it's, there's been peaks, huge peaks and valleys along my whole photography career. I would say that I, 
you know, after a while when I was a wedding photographer, I definitely survived, but I wouldn't say I thrived. It wasn't until in 2015, late 2015, when I discovered toy photography that I know that I found something that I really, really wanted to do with the photography. You know, I, I was fine with wedding photography. I enjoyed it. I, I, I feel like I was a really strong wedding photographer, but in 2015, my kid was going to high school and I was missing so much of her weekends because weddings only happen on the weekends for the most part. So that was like the deciding factor for me that I was going to try something else. And it was just serendipity, basically, that toy photography came into my life and I never looked back. I never looked back. Hold on. I... First of all, I didn't know about your brother. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, it was, it was so unexpected. He was 49 and, you know, you have no expectation that somebody that age, someone that you're really close to is, is going to be here one day and gone the next. Yeah. And it was a huge gut punch. I never knew that a person could feel so much like physical pain from, from oh, sorrow. Yeah. yeah. But it, you know, it's easy because as time goes on, you, that thankfully that does, that does get better. And, you know, of course, if you felt that way all the time, it would be <laughs> miserable, but yeah. just a natural healing process and you get over it and you're left with the, the great memories and hopefully, I'm, yeah, go ahead. I'm just a little curious because you said the word memories. Do you feel like that loss is, and wanting to be holding on to memories is kind of what led you to photography? I, I don't think so. I mean, I think, okay. well, no, in, in, in a sense, yes, because that was kind of like the thing that really made me realize that I was unhappy doing what I was doing. And that I needed to try something to do something that I felt more passion for something that I could like, where I could find that creativity that I always thought that I would, my life would be focused around when I left art school. And from that standpoint, yes, he was, my brother was pivotal in um, making me realize that for, Mm. for sure. Yes. Interesting. Okay. All right. So you just had a whole new lease on life, which, you know, unfortunately happened, but at the same time, like when it's similar for me, when I had like that near death life changing moment, that's when I realized like, I need to do something with my life. And it, it just, it gives new value to what is left of life or what you have to come and all of that. Like, so starting with your career in toy photography, how did you, how did you discover it? So my nephew, I I was on Facebook and my nephew, he was on Facebook and I started seeing these really crazy photos that he was creating with toys. And I always like one that really stands out in my memory is one where he had a Ninja Turtle riding a little BMX bike, these are toys. (laughs) And it was soaring across the sky, like maybe between two rocks or something. And I thought, wow, that is really cheesy. That was my first thought. (laughs) And the second thought was like, how the heck did he do that? Did he like, was he sitting there and throwing these toys across like this little, this little canyon here and just trying to take the shot until he finally got lucky and got it. So that was my first thought. And then my nephew, he's, his name is Johnny. He started saying, Hey, Uncle Mitch, next time you're up in San Francisco, you know, bring your camera and I'll take you out. We'll go shoot some toys. (gasps) And and I thought, okay, that sounds fine. So So he was doing it for a living or he was doing it as a hobby? Hobby. Total okay. hobby. I don't know that anybody was doing it as a living back then. I was going to ask you, I don't know why, but I get the sense that you created something like you created a space that didn't exist. I think, I think that might be possible, but, uh-huh. but anyway, so I went up to finally made it to San Francisco a few months okay. later, which is where he was. He took me to a park. I didn't have any toys. I had the camera <laughs> gear. Obviously I had the camera gear, which was great, but I had no toys. And so he lent me a couple of stormtroopers. We went to a park and I set him up. I sent these two stormtroopers up in between like the crook of a tree and it looks really cool. And I shot it and like almost immediately I realized like what the, there's, there's definitely something here with toy photography. Like, I feel like there's a career to be made out of it. That's what I was oh thinking. My God. And, and, and basically that was the starting point. That was the starting point. And I got, I started, I found out that toy photography basically lived on Instagram. I was on Instagram since 2012, but it was only to spy on my daughter, you know? Okay, <laughs> great parenting. That's what you gotta do, see what they're doing. Yeah, so you always gotta keep tabs them. on those kids. Yeah. Yes. But so once <laughs> once I found out that, that toy photography lives on there, I started being more active. And, uh, you know, cool. so that's where all, like I post literally all my photos there. And, and most of my client photos will make it there too, if I'm able to post them. When you started this, did you, immediately know how to get jobs or were you just building a portfolio essentially so the first year that I was I was I spent the first year like like figuring out the techniques and really like the effects that I wanted to use like I create all my effects practically which means they're for the most part real effects so if you see 
like liquid splashing, I'm splashing the liquid. If there's an explosion, so cool. I'm, I'm, I'm blowing off fireworks. So if there's oh a gosh. fire, I'm lighting something on fire. So oh I was figuring, gosh. yeah, I was figuring all that stuff out in the first year and putting together, you know, what you saw on Instagram in that first year. And in 2000, like the beginning of, actually it was late 2016 is when I hit the ground running. I mean, my first client, my very first client was a, co- a company called I Am Elemental Toys. Are you familiar uh-huh. with them? Well, yeah, because of your website. Oh yeah, it's Julie <laughs> yeah. Kerwin. And I remember, I really love, I love the, her action figures and what they represent, you know? And so I was reaching out to her for probably a half a year saying, hey, I would love to create, you know, oh, you know what? And she would reply, oh, I love your work. I'm not ready. And so I was persistent and with, and probably a half year later is when she finally said, yeah, let's do it. So that was my first client. And then I was on Instagram and I noticed that uh, a certain division from, it was, it was a brand called Ever After High and oh, yeah. They were, yeah, the dolls. And I noticed that they started following me. So as soon as I saw that, I sent a, a private message on Instagram said, Hey, I would love to, you know, create some images for you. And like, right out, right, like almost immediately I had a one-year contract with them, what? which was cool. Yeah. Yeah, which was cool. And then it, oh it just gosh. built, it just built from there. So it's, it started off again, that first year was just focused on the craft and putting together the work. And then after that, it just, it just snowballed. Wow. You're amazing. And you took a chance and you didn't wait. Yeah. Like they followed you. You didn't say, Oh, let me formulate a plan and a strategy. And like, you <laughs> no. just like DM, you just DM them back. You're yes. Like, hey. Immediately, almost immediately, like within 15 minutes. And then we took it from there to email and it, and it was really fast. Yeah. It was Can really I fast. ask what your contract entails for you? Is it like, I do a certain number of images for a certain number of events, like, or is it like, I am your photographer, whatever you want, you send to me, like, what's it like? Yeah, it's a it's a blend of it's a little blend of both those things. I think oh, okay. we we were contracted for like I think ten to fifteen images per month, which is quite a bit actually. Yeah, that sounds like um, a lot. Yeah, it, yeah, it is a lot. And <laughs> you're like, that was a team, mistake. <laughs> the team that I worked with there, it was really good, and I enjoyed it. And they gave me a lot of creative freedom. They would basically which is actually how I lo- love to work. They give me the, like for them, they had a theme that they wanted to work um, towards every month. So if it was September, it was maybe back to school. If it was yeah. summer, it would be summertime activities. Yeah. They would give me that kind of theme. And then I would just, I would just create the images. And then, oh. you know, you know, I would basically creative direct my own images, which is cool. At yeah. what point were you, did you even realize that you had created a job out of this? It was right around then when I got that contract. <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh but I mean, that, but that was the goal. That was, that was absolutely the goal from the very first second that I took that first toy photo with my nephew. Um, How, like, okay. I have several, uh, several questions. Let me see, focus on toy photography first. First question is I am, I don't, you don't know this, but I'm very impressed with photographers and photography. Like I have a couple of friends that they don't like use Instagram often, but when they post, they put po- like they're posting photography. It's beautiful. And you can see how they see the world through their through what they post. Right, right. And it, it's like, I literally, one of them is my best friend. And I literally have been in a situation where I'm like, I'm gonna try to copy this photo you just took because yeah. I just want to understand how you see things and how you think. And like, I can't, I'm just not, I'm not a photographer. That is just not <laughs> something that I do. I can do so many things. I literally will call my boyfriend in before I set up a shot. And I'm like, does this look, like, can you just tell me like, cause I can't see it. And I'm, I'm just curious, like, what do you have to do to get into your mindset to shoot for toys? Like, what is the toy photographer mindset? I'm sure everybody's different, but for me, it's, you definitely have to, to go into it with that sense of play. And for me, it's like, it, it's like, we all played with toys. That's the one thing that I think all of us probably have in common. There's a few things, but yeah. one I, I could safely say is that we all played with toys when we were kids. Right. And so it's a matter of like getting to that space that you're talking about. It's like trying to find that. I often talk about that 10 year old kid that lives inside of me. And, you know, maybe at first it was a little harder to find, but right. Like I've been doing this for since late 2015 and like that little, that little 10 year old boy basically lives pretty close underneath the surface of my skin now. So where I could get him out, like, but I'll be honest, I've been, I've always been kind of immature and I have a, I have a very, I have a very quirky, strange sense of humor, which sometimes will come out in my toy photography and my yeah. personal stuff. And so it's always like, okay, do I want to post this? This is pretty weird, but ah, I'll post it. Yeah. Because I mean, it's, it's really, it's me. And I think if there's one thing that, that like you, myself, and most people have learned, it's that 
you need to be authentic when you're yeah. like for yourself for your own self you know yeah. well-being but it's but it's like that's what people react to I mean it's it's ridiculous to try and be something that you're not so I I try to let out that 10 year old boy as much as possible because first of all it's great for my career yeah. second of all it's just it's just fun to have that that kid around too because it, it keeps me happy and it's like a, you know we've gone through some tough times the past well I don't know I, at least the past year but yeah. more than that so you know if you have that sense of humor and sense of play it, it makes it a lot easier so tell me what's the weirdest photo that you posted that you were like should I t- should I post this <laughs> okay about. I have I have a few okay. like <laughs> like there's one that I recently had that what? that's really bizarre that I reposted but it's I'm not looking. something that I feel would be weird for people to see it's the one of Gollum and he's like he's from Lord of the Rings right yeah. and he's like riding a horse and he's herding a bunch of rancor which are these Star Wars monsters I see you it. see it yeah I see it yeah. So that one's pretty bizarre. In fact, a lot of people that saw that basically commented in, in kind ways that it's really bizarre. <laughs> is he carrying like Woody's hat? Like what is Well, it's not Woody's hat. It's just he's just, it's just a cowboy. It's a cowboy hat from my from my childhood that I had. Oh. But that's like that's one's toy that I still have is that cowboy. But another one that was really that I actually thought, well, this is a little weird. Someone so said you know, ha ha so Mitch. Did somebody? Yeah. That's so, so that person knows me. Knows GT me. Rain says, ha ha. Oh, okay. So cool, Mitch. Yeah, this is great. So the other strange, like one that comes comes to mind is, you know how the movie Alien, have you seen the movie Alien? Yeah, but so long ago. I don't yeah, I so there's anything. a very iconic scene where oh. one of the characters, yeah, the character has the, has the, the, the juvenile or baby alien pop out of his stomach at, a, yeah. at the dinner table. And so I recreated that, but I'm not sure if you'll find it because it's kind of far down in, in the feed. But so the premise of the story was that sometimes those little baby aliens get turned around inside and they come out the wrong spot of the human body. And so this one was like popping out of the stormtrooper's rear, basically. I'm scrolling. It's, oh, it's I kind see of it. Oh. Can you, can you oh. swipe that? Because I think I put a close yeah. up on it if you swipe yes, it too. Yes, you did. Yeah. Oh my. And yeah. And then... And then I love like the other stormtroopers kind of like they're in shock seeing what's happening to their buddy. Let's see the comments. What did the Xeno do inside there? I guess <laughs> Pepto-Bismol didn't work. Hi, yes, man. Oh my gosh, this is great. Oh, it's so fun. So I'm curious, how much of the stuff that you do is more fun, the fun stuff that you do for you than it is for your client work? It's, I would say it's probably 90% my stuff. Oh, that's yeah. so great. That means you really love it. You really yeah. love it. I mean, when I'm not doing client work, I'm, and if I'm not busy with like marketing or some of the other business stuff, yeah, I like to shoot my own stuff. Okay. And that, and I, for me, it's, that's a way of like, kind of just continually working on my storytelling. Yes. Maybe trying out some new techniques that I, that I want to try out and just to keep the, you know, just to stay busy on, on social media, which is important. What, tell me the coolest shot set up, like shot that you've made, like not the weirdest now, like, like the, like the most <laughs> intricate. Because I, I, I see, in, for somebody who doesn't know anything about photography, it it looks like, oh, did they Photoshop this? But then I've seen some behind the scenes things where you can see like fishing line, right? That you're actually <laughs> yeah. I usually use things. like wire. I usually like wire, like metal wire to support stuff. But okay. once in a while, if it's a really heavy toy, then I'd have to suspend it with fishing line, like you say, because it's easier to do. But the most intricate, yeah. It's prob- well. I did a really like intricate lighting one with a creature from the Black Lagoon and he's probably more recent than the one that we just looked at but I used uh, like I used these lights called Lytra lights and they're little LEDs that one you can see there's like water and there's a glow coming up so I put all these lights underneath the water cuz they're waterproof first of all the lights are waterproof and I put these colored gels on them and I color gelled the back so that's why you have the red in the background and then I I, and the bubbles that you see and the smoke coming up from the bubbles, it kind of looks like dry ice, but re- really well, all I did was shoot some compressed air underneath the water. Wow. And that's basically what happens. That's basically what happens. So I have to ask, are you happy with your job now that you've made this in, this crazy career shift? Yeah, no, yeah. totally. I, I can't imagine doing, like throughout my career, I would consider, I consider myself a restless creative and my poor wife, she had to get used to that because yeah. like I had the best job ever at Disney in, when I was in consumer products. And after six years, I just got kind of tired of working with the same, you know, IP. And yeah. so, and so, but other than that, like the people were amazing. I had passes to the, all the parks in the world we could yeah. go to and 
but ultimately I got a little bored creatively and I wanted to try something else. So I left that job. So I don't see myself making that switch now. I mean, I've done so many different things and I think this is the one that that's finally going to stick just because it allows me to be as creative as I can. So any limitation on my creativity for, for this, for this particular career is self-imposed. So if I can't get out of that, then I only have myself to blame. And toys are the perfect, for me, the perfect vehicle for telling stories because they can do almost anything that you want them to do. They can fly, they can be blown to bits. They can, you know, stuff that you can't do with people, essentially, you know, shooting weddings was, you know, going from photographing weddings to photographing toys yeah. was like, was like amazing. Like, really? like the, you didn't feel yeah. isolated. Like you're like, no, 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 no. Like the little joke that I like to tell is I went from shooting Bridezilla to shooting Godzilla. Ah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But having said that, I've never photographed the Bridezilla. All right, my okay. brides that I shot were cool, but, it, but I, I coined a term called Momzilla. Those things do exist. Oh, yeah. 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 Huh. The mothers of the brides can be the ones that can give you a big headache, but do you have, yeah. Yeah. Total creativity. Total do you creativity have any now. toys that are like your favorite to pose and shoot? You know, toys have, as you probably know, toys have varying degrees of quality and articulation. So, yeah. but I work with, I work with totally like toys that are not articulated. They're more like little statues, like cake yeah. toppers. Like I've oh. worked, like I'll sometimes go into Amazon and I'll just check out different cake toppers because they have really nice cake toppers. You just can't pose them, you know? Yeah. But, but of course, they're usually in like an iconic pose. So you can at least get one shot out of them. And if you're lucky, you can get several shots out of them. But yeah, I probably the toys that I really enjoy working with are like, I obviously love the Toy Story toys. And I think yeah. more more than the quality or the articulation or anything is, is my connection to the to the toys or the, more, more so the connections to the the properties and the stories. Like I shoot a lot of Toy Story because my kid and I, we watched when she was growing up, I watched those movies with her dozens of times, you Aww. know? And so for me, it's driven by nostalgia. Yeah. And I feel like if I have an emotional connection to a property or a toy, then that's going to come through in the, in the final image. Like where the wild things are, I've done several images of those. And that's because once a week I would sit, my daughter and I would sit at the floor on the like by her bed and I'd read her that story once a week we'd read that at least once a week we'd read that story that's probably her favorite story so Aww. when I saw that McFarlane had done those toys a while ago I found them on the second like on eBay and I bought them because I had to create some images with them so, so definitely it's the property it's the property what kind of clients do you do work for do you do product photography or is it more like when they have a special event and they want to do a big banner or poster or magazine cover like what are your clients like Right. It's, it's both those things and more. So for, I would say most of the clients that I have, they yeah. want their, maybe they're coming out with a new toy line and they want to create a social media campaign around it. And so I would say that the majority of my work is for social media, like for clients to put on social media. And then on the other hand, I've had like uh, Disney, one of the jobs I did for Disney, it was, it was to promote the release of Toy Story 4. So mm -hmm. that was more of a promotional thing it would it went out to all the press and it was like in newspapers and things so like cool. that yeah so that that's the other kind of the other aspect of it and then I did one job for Warner Brothers which no one will ever see because it was used as a pitch to a large IP holder so uh. so I did these images it was actually for Harry Potter and it was Harry Potter toys and they brought it to somebody to say this is what we have we want to do for a for a tv show or whatever it was going to be for so that's also another part of it. So I, it's hard to say what's going to come up next, but probably like the first one that I said, it's going to be for social media, but it could be almost anything else as well. So for Marvel 616, that's a documentary currently streaming on Disney+. Plus. I was okay. featured in episode six, which is like the toy episode. Oh, which was cool. cool. So, but out of that, they had me, they commissioned me to do the, the key art, which was used to promote the episode. So that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Like, I'm just amazed, like even like, I don't know. I'm just amazed that you built this all so quickly in the toy industry. It's a business that almost didn't exist before. I guess if, if somebody listening is thinking like, oh my God, I love photography. I would love that to be my job. What advice just would you have for them? Just having gone from the very beginning yeah. So you're right. It, back to that point that you discussed earlier. I don't, I feel like I've been a, kind of a trailblazer yeah. as far as toy photography in the industry goes. No doubt there's like 
thousands of toy photographers worldwide doing this as a as a hobby mm -hmm. and some of them are actually getting paid jobs through different toy companies now but but uh, I don't think it was a thing five yeah. years ago for sure and so so if anybody there there are people that would love like the toy photographer I have a lot of friends that would love to do this as a full-time job I won't lie it's it's tough but I've I've but I always say like I'll talk to any creator any creative person and tell them that, you know, for me, and I think this can apply to almost any creative. So for mm -hmm. me, I've seen both sides. I was a wedding photographer and I consider that one of the most competitive um, genres of photography to work in. I was squarely in, in the section of, toy, of wedding photographers that I consider a commodity. So my prices probably started like, if I'm remembering correctly, $2,000, $2,500 for a wedding. It went up to probably 5000 But mm -hmm. that range right there, especially in the, my beginning rate, was, was probably the most competitive area to be. And so... I would have clients meet with me and or potential clients. And even though I love, they love my work, I knew that when they left the door, they were going to probably talk to four or five more wedding photographers to price shop them. And right. if they, if they like the, if they like the photography, at, but they also had a killer price that they would probably get the job. And it was a, it was a, a time when I felt I had very little strength in negotiating or in charging what I thought I was worth. Right. So if any creators that are listening, I think the key is to definitely find a niche to work in. And my niche is toy photography. And if you don't have a niche, then you have to find a way to really differentiate yourself from your competitors because you need to stand out somehow and you need to be the person that somebody wants to go to for a specific reason, whether it's the specific toy design that you're coming up with, the, the photography, or if it's a specific service that you offer. It has to be something that draws a person to you that they can't go anywhere else for. So I... I always like to say that, you know, as creators, we need to take risks, but I think for your audience, I think most of them already are, you know, yeah, because they're, sure, yeah. because I mean, I have so much appreciation and respect for like, for sure, toy inventors. And that's mm -hmm. something that I even dabbled with when I was oh. like in, in a previous career. But, but having said that, I never came out with a toy design of my own, but I have designed and licensed my own like collectible lines. Oh, cool. And, and having said that, like licensing is such an amazing thing to be involved with. As you know, it's almost like acting. You do a job and then for months or years later, you still get those checks in right. the mail, which is cool. <laughs> yeah. So although I love what I'm doing now, I, I would love to, you know, I would love to to design my own toy line at yeah. some time oh, in the future. Oh, okay. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's just like, I think that's the... I think that would be the ultimate, of course, that I photograph it myself. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> like you would have the best photos. Yes, so it'd be fun, but yeah. Think, thinking on that vein, I'm wondering, because some of my listeners, like, you know, they start up their own companies, they're really small, and they might say, I'm not ready to hire a toy photographer yet. But do you have any tips for somebody that's just using their cell phone and just trying to take interesting photos of their own stuff like and honestly this advice can even apply to me because I don't yeah. even know like I don't know like when I take a photo I just sometimes get lucky and it's a great composition <laughs> this is literally it's when you see good photos of me on online my boyfriend took them I did not take them. <laughs> so like I don't know any advice that you could give somebody that's created a product and they're like I just want to be able to point and shoot what should they be paying attention to is it lighting is it positioning is it what is it yeah I would say first and foremost it's probably light because that can make or break a photo no matter how good you know everything else is okay. like if you don't have light. good light it's just going to look all muddy there's not going to be any contrast yeah I would say and as an easy start like window light is really beautiful uh -huh. not necessarily yes. sunlight coming directly onto your toy but yeah like more of a diffused light yeah is, okay. is beautiful light and then sometimes if you do that, the shadow can be so strong on the opposite side of the light that yeah. if you just place, it could be even a desk lamp, just play around with the different um, angles and you can yeah. kind of soften that shadow. But I think that's the main key is, is light. For someone just starting, do you think it'd be better if they're like, if they're like, okay, I just need some basic images, but I also want them to be interesting. Would they be better off just like getting a kind of like a seamless background that's one color and putting their product on that or trying to get fancy and like go outside and like do it like in that way for somebody that's just starting out yeah I mean it's two different things so for me it's like I've I'm often well not often but I used to get asked to take like photos of toys for like white on white backdrops for catalogs and really? for online yeah what? but I I politely <laughs> I politely turned that down you know 
because when I started doing this, I just, I knew I just wanted to focus on creative storytelling, but for, you know, so it really kind of depends on what the person is after. Like if you wanted to shoot a toy, do you want, is it more for Amazon? In which case you're definitely going to want to do oh, the, yes. yeah. yeah, the white background. I'm thinking more oh. social media. Like what if they were just trying to fill their, their, their social media with more angles and images that are interesting of their product, like being a beginner, are they better off just going solid background or trying to get fancy outside or kitchen table yeah i mean i would i would take it outside or or yeah. or in, even inside with props and I, I wouldn't i don't know if it's getting fancy but it's <laughs> and but it's really i mean i so what i think is for me what i think yeah. is most important is storytelling right okay so okay. so like i'll, I'll tell I you like you. like honestly i would rather see you take a photo of your toy with some kind of story and not be a great photo I'd rather see that than see you nail the photo, but not tell me anything emotionally with that product. Is there like a thing you go through in your head when you're planning a story for your shots? No, there's no thing. There's no thing. I mean, each thing is different. So it's, it's really about the toy and what comes into my head as far as how do I want to portray that toy in the world that I'm creating. So like, for example, for a client photo, if I'm yeah. working with a toy company, yeah. like my goal, okay, so first of all, in general, yeah. or even my own work, not necessarily a client, I want, like, everybody is so used to thumbing through photos on Instagram, yes. like yeah, yeah, really yeah. quick, right? Yeah. So I want my photo to be dynamic, first of all, right. to get that person to stop, stop. scrolling for a mm-hmm. second. And then second, I really want there to be some kind of intriguing story or some kind of emotion or something happening that really grabs that person by the collar and kind of pulls them into that world that I've created for just a few seconds, just so that they can kind of live in there. Because when that happens, I mean, I think they really start to see the toy that's in there and how it's reacting with the, with the world that I created uh-huh. and it makes an impact. It's more engaging. And for a client, I think that's exactly what they want. They want people to really engage with the, with that toy and the story that's being told in that image, because that's, what's going to make that person remember that toy and, you know, that engagement and getting that impact. I think yeah. those are the things that a client would be after as far as if I'm creating a a photo for them. So I think it's the same for you or for anybody else that wants to put their toys, especially for social media. Yeah. It's not just show that toy and like, here's my toy. You know, if here's a toy and there's something really cool or interesting, it's tugging on some kind of emotion or it's making you laugh or whatever it is. I mean, it's a photo. So you have to tell, obviously when I say tell a story, yeah. it could be like just an emotional bam, like a media impact, or it could be something that you infer something and you make that person kind of complete that story in their head. Can I pick a photo from your Instagram and have you t- walk me through the story? Okay, I picked this one. I picked the one with Woody and the slinky dog coming out of the donut and then there's an alien in the donut. Oh yeah. Yeah, so, tell, so, tell me the story about this. Yeah, one. so for a lot of my images, I just want them, you know, obviously this there's a lot of fun action going on here. We have slink dog jumping through the donut. And for me, it's like the backstory would be you know, donuts, there's going to be a, there's, there's somebody's about to have breakfast there. They turn their back or they leave the room for a second in Toy Story fashion, they come to life and they start oh. doing these and they start doing these like really fun, fun things or different scenarios. So for Toy Story, I love Toy Story, aside from the fact that what I told you that I have a lot of warm memories of it. Toy Story is just great because it's the one chance that I have to create toys using toys yeah. and they are toys in the, in their storyline, in their lives, they are toys. Yeah. So for me, it's like, these are amazing because I don't have to worry about, you know, scaling them to look like they're supposed to be people. Right. You know, they work perfectly with real world environments and props. So what kind of stories can I tell in those situations? And in this particular day, it was just like, you know, I'm going to have Slink Dog instead of jumping through a hoop or something like trained dogs often do. I'm going to have him jumping through a donut. Woody's going to be all excited. There's going to be donut crumbs flying around and the alien is just kind of like a like one of the audience member he's just there yeah. essentially but, oh that's so, I love I didn't even think like I love that you thought like somebody's having breakfast what mayhem will they cause and then like you relate that uh, like that's so this right. is why I'm and not so, a photographer oh no 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 <laughs> it's, it, it's not that it's again yeah. thinking about for me it's thinking about so a lot of some, some like I like where I get a lot of my stories from yeah like I like to look at characters that we all 
think we know really well. This is not a good example of it, this Woody one, but other ones I'll get ideas for is like, well, we know because we're told how to, we're told what these characters are essentially. Yeah. Like the writers and the creators, they tell us like, Woody is this type of person, Buzz Lightyear is this kind of person, Darth Vader's, you know, so we're essentially force fed what these characters are and we have to go with it because that's what we're told. But my, what I love to think about is what are these characters like when we're not watching them? When, you know, when they're relaxing and not on stage, ah. you know, what do they do? So I can get so many really fun ideas from that. Like Darth Vader, for example, is he always 24 seven? Is he a villain or does he relax in his off time, you know? So- And that's also are- why that stops the scroll because people, you're showing people like another side that they're not expecting. Exactly. And that's exactly. a really great tip for somebody that wants to do it with their own product. Like maybe they're always showing their doll or something in, in one light. It'd be fun to take a turn one day and show like, this is what she does when I'm not looking. That's so, that's a absolutely. Great- absolutely. It's looking at, it's looking at life a little differently through a different lens almost to see the unexpected. Okay. Yeah. How do you see photography evolving and changing with the growing popularity of advertising and shopping online? Well, for, for one thing, for sure, it's very, it's always getting more competitive, you know, oh, that's, okay. I mean, I will say that with the advent of digital photography, it's, it's enabled everybody to really purchase an affordable camera mm-hmm. and hang that professional photographer shingle on the door, with whatever they do. And so obviously it's buyer beware, you know, right. but but everybody's got to chase their dreams and do what they want to do. For me, I, f- I feel like social media is probably the big change of the most recent years, because whereas companies maybe used to have huge advertising budgets, maybe now it's they're, they're giving some of that advertising budget to social media because mm-hmm. social media is almost like the new advertising. And yeah. so for, you know, like I said, like a lot of my work is for social media. Yeah. And I would just say to photographers out there, like, if a company comes to you and says, you know, you know, we don't have a whole, you don't have a huge budget for this. It's but anyways, just for social media. Well, social yeah. media is the new advertising. So, so I would say I would push back on that and say, well, you know what, how else are you going to do your advertising if not through social media? Because this is where, where people are discovering and trusting and being told stories about your product. So, yes. you know, I think p- photographers and creators in general have to kind of relook at how they consider social media in their pricing schemes. I also sure. feel like your images could be really good live photos since video does so well on social. Like if even if it's like two seconds of your shots would be a really cool way to promote, to, to get even more reach with your- Motion, motion is definitely, definitely important. Yeah. And yeah, and I've always thought about getting into motion. Yeah. But one thing at a time, I think. I so, know. It's so, yeah. it's so much. Yeah. It's like, where do you want to devote your focus and attention? Because there's a learning, learning process. Yeah. And right now I've carved out a pretty nice niche. So yeah. I think I'm going to keep focusing on that, but definitely yeah. um, I've played with motion in the past and yeah. I'll probably get there again at some point. If people are thinking like, oh, I really love Mitchell's work. I want to work with him, but I just don't know how I could use this kind of like imagery to really propel my business? Yeah. I mean, that's a really good question. I will say that in my experience, the engagement levels are incredibly high with toy photography. So I could be, I think I could be safe in saying that no matter how toy photography is used, if there's, if the goal is to create engagement and impact, I think that it can be the main part of a campaign. Have you ever had somebody come to you and say, Mitchell, I want to drive engagement and this is my toy. What kind of shot do you think we should do? Yes. I mean, I do okay. have that. I mean, and it kind of goes along with them giving me creative direction when they do hire me, because for me, it's really about, again, it's really about storytelling. So I will never create an image or I will strongly suggest that a client doesn't just have me create a static image of a toy that doesn't say much at all. Mm. You know, I, I always kind of liken it to like the summer blockbuster. Like I've been to movies, you know, I paid my $10 for a ticket and I sit there and, and I watch all these explosions and action. <laughs> and then a week later I'm going, what did I even see? I can't even remember anything about it. So yeah. I have nothing against all of those effects because yeah. in the right, in the right story, yeah. it's it's amazing. Yeah. But the but the key word is the story. So mm. I will always highly recommend that 
stories are the like no matter what a, a company decides to do with their advertising or campaign mm -hmm. storytelling should be at the very base of it and for toy photography again I couldn't find a stronger medium to tell stories with and I mean I, it's not just toys when I worked with Mattel they you know I was doing their ever after high stuff I did some monster high minis mm -hmm. and then the the um, person I was working with there said, hey, how would you feel about doing some, working on some some images for our Uno, for our Uno, not toy line, it's a game, right? Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's probably the most famous card game in the world. Yeah. And, you know, I paused, I said, well, this isn't even a toy. It's like, <laughs> right, it's not, it's hardly even three dimensional. It's two, it's sort of like two dimensional. <laughs> But, I, but on the other hand, I always, I always told myself that it's really about the story. It's yeah. always about the story. And so I felt like if I could tell an interesting story with that, I would be like, I would enjoy it. So did I said, of course, it? of course I said, yes, I'll do it. And like, I always like the first image I did was I had my wife fold these origami swans out of, a, I don't, it's down there somewhere. Oh, I'm going to look for it. Yeah. I heard, I had her fold a bunch of origami, origami swans out of the cards and I, I positioned them so they out, were flying. Wait, 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 out of the cards? Out of Uno cards, yeah. How did she, okay. Like, cause they're so thick. How yeah, she... so she tried and it was really almost impossible. So what I ended up doing was I made um, these really beautiful color copies of the cards oh, okay. and, then, and then she folded them out of that. Okay. And then I had, I positioned them. So they were, they were flying out of a small oh, bird see cage. I found yeah, it. and after I created that image, it was like, not only was I like really excited and, and happy with it, I was like as happy and excited with that image as I was with any toy photo I created up to that oh, point. Wow. So that was when I realized that it really isn't just the toy. It's more about the storytelling. Oh my so. gosh. This is such a great example of that because so many people I think are obsessed with their product and they're like, no, I just want to show my pristine product in the pristine way that it's meant to be shown. Right. And you, toy photography, you're creating art out of the toys. Right. It's um, not about showing every single component that comes with it. It's not about showing it like how it comes out of the box. It's right. creating a story almost by any means necessary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The first game that I used inadvertently, well, it wasn't inadvertent, but it was toy. It was Woody and Jesse on a Monopoly game. Uh -huh. And they were, and there's like, there's the Mon Monopoly money flying around. And, and the to I think it was used as a cover for the toy book a couple of years ago. And, but that was another instance of like my starting to use games. And it's something that I don't do a lot of, but, uh, but I've had a couple game companies reach out. It's gone nowhere, but just if any game companies are listening, I want to do more game photography. So You're hit me up because I think it's a whole new area for storytelling and just creating some cool, very cool images with, with game I pieces. I love it. And I hope some reach out to you because <laughs> games are doing so well right now. I bet yes. they have the money to invest in some new marketing. They right. want to keep it going. Right. Fingers um, crossed. <laughs> any advice you have somebody that might want to be starting in toy photography or they're struggling with it? What do you have to say? Yeah, I think the, the main point, and it would be for any creator, basically, not just toy photography, is really okay. try to find your own voice and try to have your own, like, develop a really strong style for yourself because it's not, it's, there's not going to be any use or it's not going to benefit anybody to come out with, a, like, another Mitch Wu toy photography, just as I wouldn't want to go and look like somebody else. But I'm sure that there are so many people out there that have, like, there are mind blowing toy photographers doing incredible work right now. It just blows my mind. And it, it, it's all happened within five years. Like every time I go into Instagram, like my jaw drops. It's like, I cannot believe like there's so much talent. So I would take, you know, if you're doing that or if you're just getting started, know that it's just a learning curve and you just got to shoot and shoot and shoot. And don't forget the other part, which I was talking about is just tell a story through it. So do those two things, I mean, I could get into like the nitty gritty, like one would be like always try to bring yourself down to the level of the toy when you're shooting, because it makes it easier for the viewer to enter that world that you're creating. So Ooh, rather than, good, okay. but there's rules, there's definitely rules to be broken depending on what you're doing. But in general, that's what I say, because if you're shooting from higher up, it yeah. just, it just makes them look more like toys, which is okay. Because I don't try that. I never hide the fact that they're toys. I don't, I don't Photoshop out like the joints or the seam lines. I right. leave everything in because this is toy photography, you know, and right. toys is like one half of that. So right. I will always make sure that my toys are toys. But again, it's about storytelling and letting the person kind of enter the world that you created. And to do that, try to get down to the toys level, whether that's mm. on a table or like me, I'm often laying on the ground. <laughs>
you know, <laughs> but whatever it is and, and don't get wrapped up in the gear initially. Uh-huh. You brought up, you brought up the iPhone. There's amazing work that can be done with like smartphone cameras. I mean, there's, there's great editing apps. One Snapseed, I think there's Photoshop that you can get on an app on your phone. Mm-hmm. There's almost everything that you could do with a camera, like a SLR mm-hmm. and a computer, you can get, you can do it on a phone these days. So I would say don't let like the camera, if you don't have it, be a roadblock to like starting because it doesn't have to be. But yeah, just, I mean, if you're interested in toy photography, even you. Did, so I feel like I'm a lost cause. It. No, I'm you're a- not. Because because <laughs> there should be no expectations. There should be no expectations on what you should create. Just get your toys and try and tell a story. Maybe you know? I will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and remember, I would much, unless you're doing it professionally, Yeah. I, I say technique is like secondary to storytelling. But really? I, obviously if you're doing it professionally, then the two yeah. have to be, the two need yeah. to be good. Like uh-huh. They need to be solid. But as you're just starting out, it's like, I would say focus on the storytelling because everybody just resonates to stories, not the actual photography. Yeah. You know? Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for the, all these, I love the end, the end, you just blew it up with all these tips. <laughs> Thank you, Mitchell. Thanks for being here. You're today. welcome. You're welcome. And where can cool. people find you? My website is www.mitchellwutoyphotography.com. If nobody, if anybody's wondering what I do, I think they Instagram, never... your Mitchell Wu Photography. Yeah. And then, and it's one L in Mitchell. And on Facebook, mm-hmm. I'm Mitchell Wu Photography. Twitter, I'm at Mitchell Wu Photo. I will yeah. make sure to put it all in the show notes. Thanks so much for being here today. It was a pleasure getting to know you and chat with fun. you. Yeah. God, we finally did it. We did it. Yeah, you're awesome. Keep being awesome, Michelle. There you have it, toy people, my interview with Mitchell Wu, the Instagram verified toy photographer that you need to be following. Mitchell's conversation today really changed my perspective about toy photography and honestly, photography in general. If you want to see the full video of our interview, head over to club.thetoycoach.com because it's not too late to grab your 30-day free trial of the Podcast Insiders Club. As a member, you'll get access to the extended audio and video of today's episode, and trust me, it's really great stuff. Plus, you'll get that for every episode moving forward. Toy people, I hope that today you learn the value of telling a story through your toy photography. And I would love it if you would put that lesson into action today. I want you to come up with a story for your toy product do a little photo shoot on your own, on your phone, post it to Instagram and tag me in it at the toy coach. I want to see what you create for links to Mitchell's website, Instagram, and Twitter, head over to the forward slash 71, or check the show notes. As always, thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me today. I know there are a ton of podcasts out there, so it means the world to me that you tune into this one. Until next week, I'll see you later, toy people. Thanks for listening to Making It in the Toy Industry podcast with Ajel Wade. Head over to thetoycoach.com for more information, tips, and advice.